Hi everybody, this is Ken and welcome to another edition of Rainy Day Brain and this week we're covering the next chapter in the novel The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris, which I've been reviewing chapter by chapter, week by week for a few weeks now. And this time he's he's explaining that all of us are of two minds, whether we fully realize it or not. There's our observing mind, which does what it says it does. It just observes everything around it and says nothing. And then you have the thinking mind, which is constantly chattering away in the background like a radio station that you can't turn down or turn off. In fact, if you try to willfully ignore the radio station, it kind of turns itself up so that you can better hear it because it doesn't want you to miss out, right? Uh, my brain has, it's the worst radio station. So he basically wants people to become comfortable with the notion of, okay, you've got your observing brain. Uh, a good example of this, your observant mind would be when you're focused on maybe shooting at a target with a bow and arrow or a gun. You're completely focused in that moment on nothing more than lining up the shot. You're not thinking about anything else. That's a pure state of concentration that is usually immediately ruined by your thinking brain going, boy, I hope I don't mess up this shot. So he has these exercises in this chapter to help us better acquaint ourselves with acknowledging thoughts and then letting them float by. So it's another step in another technique in diffusion that's uh, more purposeful. Diffusion you can use every day, but this is basically meditation is what it is. And for anyone who's done any work with meditation, you'll recognize what he's doing. So he first has you take 10 deep breaths and then close your eyes and just try to concentrate on your breathing and don't think about anything. And then when an errant thought or an image pops up in your head, you're just supposed to acknowledge that image like you would acknowledge a person walking by you on the street or perhaps a car passing you on the highway, right? The car is coming towards you. Hopefully you don't turn and follow it with your head as it goes by. That could be bad. You're driving. <laughs> so it's the same, uh, it's the same idea basically with our thoughts. Rather than giving them attention and engaging with them, we acknowledge that, oh, there's a thought. And then we just let it go and return back to paying attention to our breathing. If you do this type of meditative practice regularly, it's supposed to help. I've been doing it for a while and I think I think it does help a little bit. I do it every day on my lunch hour and I think it, it actually does help me calm my mind and get it to shut the hell up for a little bit. So the techniques like the diffusion techniques where we put the words, oh, it's the I'm a loser story again to diffuse the negative thought, or we repeat the negative thought in a, in a funny voice to ourselves to rob it of its power. Those are the techniques you can use throughout the day, and then the meditation is supposed to be just a focus time just for you to where you can work on really just achieving a state of relaxed concentration. I have to say so far I really like what he's doing in this book because he's not trying to have me replace my negative thoughts with positive thoughts. In fact, he strenuously advises against it to continue using his radio analogy. That would be like trying to drown out a radio station you hate by playing another radio station at the same time at the same volume. Um, it doesn't help. In fact, it's probably even more distracting and doesn't really accomplish much. And as we all know, our negative thought broadcasting radio station, if it feels it's not being heard, it has a tendency to try to turn itself up. So, yeah. So I, I like the groundwork that he's been laying so far with these diffusion techniques to where we're not trying to replace negative thoughts with happy ones, we're not trying to forcefully ignore negative thoughts, we're trying to just accept that they're thoughts, they're meaningless, they're words, and to just acknowledge them and let them go by while we pay attention to more important things, like enjoying ourselves and giving ourselves a break once in a while. So that's it. I'll be back next week with the next chapter. If you have any questions, uh, of course, you can always send them to me, ken at don'tpunishpain.com. And uh, thanks for joining me. Until next time, 
I'm Ken. You take care and be good to yourself.